Anybody, everybody got it? First Timothy 6, from verse 6 to 12. Say amen when you go. Amen. All right. Okay, Sister Larod, you can go ahead, honey. Good night, everyone. I'm reading from First Timothy chapter 6, from verses 6 to 12. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we, we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich for they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lust, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Amen. 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 All right. So we're going to talk about the curse of mammon. Anybody knows, I mentioned it briefly, who is, what is mammon? Uh, who, anybody knows about that? Okay. Um, somebody phone needs to mute. Anybody knows about the curse of mammon? Anybody knows about Maman? Who's Maman? I heard about it already, Sister Shana, but I know much about it. But I heard about Was Maman is saying money? Mm -hmm. Anybody knows? All right. Okay, so I will give you a little insight. Um, I usually put things here and there with you guys, but I'll give you a, um, a little insight of it. Now, we're going to talk about it, and I'm going to start breaking down this, and I'm going to explain some things to you. After all, we were bought nothing with us when you came into the world, and we can't take anything with us when we leave it. That's the first idea I want people to understand when it comes to the things that we, we lost after. One of the things humanity lost the most, a lot of the crime and the things and the separation people have from God is to do with money. Now with money, there's a God of money and the God of money is mammon. Mammon is from the sea. That's why you see a lot of um, rituals and stuff for money. They tell you go to the water. Okay. That's one thing I want you to identify. And I know most people who know, people came out of different background. Any rituals you'll see they do for doing when it comes to money, you have to connect with water because mammon is from the water, the God of money, mammon. That's the God, the demon of money. Okay? Now, people are going in this direction that they are in a different level of greed. And the greed that you're experiencing and the discontentment that you're experiencing, it is from the God of money named Mammon. And Mammon is what caused people to be on the hustle and grind. Now, the hustle and grind, in case you guys don't know, is that it is not of God. The, this attitude that we take, uh, that we, we use it loosely, but the truth is that people do really live that as a reality. But they're like, all I do is work. And you see, live not to be rich. Because you see, that is when people lose the direction of God. Because when you start to labor, because mama tell you, you have to pursue that desire that you feel from the things and you need that money. Mama gives you a greed that you have to be motivated. Mama make you stressed over money. Mama make you feel so inferior and lost after the things of this world. That's what the God of ma money does, mama. That is what it does. So when you feel that drive and you just cannot control it, you're under that control. So 
We have enough food and clothes. Let us be contented. That is why mammon make you feel like you are always in need of these things. So you have to fight like a demon. We have to work to eat. A lazy man does not get food. But mammon tell you, put God aside. You have to to do this or else. So mama make you labor like a slave and you're not happy even earning the money because mama has enslaved you that you lost your happiness because mama is driving you for something that you cannot even control. Money cannot be controlled. Without God, you need godly wisdom. But mama make you work and never make an accomplishment. This is what the God of money does. Are we learning something? The Amen. God of money make you do so many things. That God of money makes people who are godly become criminals. That, that, that mammon is in the body of Christ like never before. I am talking about last day's messages to open up the eyes of God's people. But people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by foolish and harmful desires that plunder them into ruin and destruction. Now greed and lusting over what the next person has, has entered into the body of Christ. That's why everybody wants a new couch every tax season. That's why everybody wants a certain car to drive to the church. That's why everybody wants a certain suit, tailor-made, just to go into the church because mama has stressed you and caused you to lust and run into over time and overthinking of how could I overtake that person to look good. Amen, I amen. I hope you're getting it. And then when mama enter and trap you into ruin and destruction, Christians are all over the internet with a thong. Because now they forgot that they, who they are and who they represent and this flesh went into overdrive because mama has distracted them from godliness. Hmm. Be careful of the curse of mammon. Money is good, but the mammon that God that people fall into worship in love with and do not know he exists has caused many to be destroyed. Many. I actually have a picture here of what Mammon looked like. I should have put it up. I want people to know what I am saying is real. And when I'm saying this, I know a lot of people's eyes are opening and identifying to what I am saying. You start to reach a place that you need validation and glorifying when Mammon enter. People are, look at the, the preacher that they got with the, 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 uh, the, the house, the, the robbing people. Look at, they have this other pastor, Brian said he's a drug dealer for Christ because his church had the biggest property in America, so they're going to start selling marijuana. That's mammon that's driving him. So he called himself a drug dealer for Christ so they can bring young black men into the church because they'll get job and they'll keep clean air because they're selling marijuana because it's legal doesn't mean it's good. That's why they have restriction on, on drugs because it is legal to take them, but they have restriction because they are addictive, but people don't realize that because something is legal doesn't mean it is good. But Mammon is telling you to run after it. God help us. Jenna, mute your phone, please. For the love of money is the root of all okay. kinds of evil. All amen, kinds of evil. Amen. All kinds of evil. You as a Christian, if you sit here and really think how the money 
has driven you to do certain things so you can fit in and you can get applause and you can get like and you can get this. You would see mama has been directing your life. You even fall asleep with the things of God because you overdrive for the mama that mama puts you to sleep when it's time for God. Hey. Tell me I'm lying. It's a fact. Mammon has caused the people of God to fall into a slumber. How many people know that is true? Yes, that's true. People have their love. They, listen to it. And some people crave money have wandered from true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. People has left the true church and the body of Christ because of mama telling them you got to chase that money. And leaving church, I'm not talking about the building, I'm talking about you leave God in total. Because mama tell you, when you make that money, you need to flaunt it and the church limits you from throwing it up in the air in a strip club. They know you're a Christian, but you're not a Christian. They won't talk about you because they know you, that's what you do, you're in the world. So you have to leave the body of Christ, go to the strip club and throw the money that mama gave to you. Mammon is deceiving the people of God. That's why so many leaders are falling like flies. Amen. They are falling down and scattering. They are robbing the people of God. The building fund has been going on for 20 years and the building is the same size. Because Mammon has motivated them. And then it's okay if a pastor of food and he get a nice car or somebody donates on their own because they didn't do anything wrong. It's okay. But they are literally making people feel guilty for doing these things and telling them if they don't do it, they're not doing it for God. Are you God? Amen, amen. That's what Mammon is doing. That is not money. It's the love of it which caused you to love the God of it, which is Mammon, that causing all the destruction. Look at what happened to what Olsen Bolt. They're not even Christian, but Mammon motivated them to destroy. Mammon said, I don't want to work for that money no more. You could just steal it. What Satan come to do? Steal, kill, and destroy. My God, help us. But at the end, they turn from God and they were pierced with many sorrows because no, you don't have God as a shield. You are exposed to destruction. Do you see how Satan is deceptive? He's telling you, I'll give you. So he's giving you one hand and he's killing you with the next one. People of God, these messages are very deep and real. Take what I am teaching you. Amen. Amen, amen. As a sister in the body of Christ, which I love you enough to tell you the truth. Many churches may not teach this thing, but you have to have the knowledge in this time that we're in. They are last day messages. God help us. But you, Timothy, are a man of God. So run from all these evil things. I am given this message to tell you, run for your life. Somebody say, run for your life. Run, run for, for your life. life. Run for your life. Please. Money, you see, money is a tool. It's a medium to perform transaction for what we need. It is not bad. You can choose to worship money or you can choose, you have two choices, to worship wealth or worship with our wealth. To worship it or worship it with honor with your wealth. You have two choices. People worship it instead of, instead of giving honor with it. And that is where the confusion comes in. 
and is destroying the body of Christ. Don't let little money take you to hell because you cannot use money in the spirit realm. But there is a curse to it. There's a curse to it. Don't let that curse get to you. Run from all these evil things. Pursue righteousness and godly, godly life along with faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. Pursue righteousness. That's why all these young women and men prostituting themselves for money, they're throwing themselves on their back for anybody on anything. As long as they're going to get money, they corrupt their heart, they're manipulating, they're lying, they're deceiving, they're sleeping around, they're twisting people, men and women, hand to the back. You are acting like a Jersey Bell for money. That's what mama did to you. It is not you, it's the demon that is operating and running your life for money. Because you love it and I have things to do and nobody knows what they're going through. God knows what you're going through. Go to him. Amen. God help us. We should pursue faith. You need faith. Without, faith. without faith, you cannot please God. Pursue love, perseverance, and gentleness. There's a time for everything. That's why Jesus is a lion and the lamb. I told you all God, that. There's a time to be sweet as pig and pie, and there's a time to be all like a lion. There's a time for everything. And this is a season to get rescue from the deception of the enemy. Fight the good fight for true faith. Hold tightly to the eternal life to which God has called you which you have declared so well before many witnesses. Hold tight to eternal life. Hold tight, eternal life is more important than the temporary life that we have. There are more important things. You see, people may want to know why I'm talking about this. This here is in the Bible. I'm going to tell you more than 2,000 scriptures speaks of money. Guys, this here is to help you get direction and stop pursuing fleshly desires and pursue God harder. Money that just not the working and stuff is good, but Satan make you become a slave to money. That's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. Jesus spoke 38 parables, 38 parables on money and possession. So what I'm telling you is that it is important. And I'm telling you for the seasons that you're going through because temptation is knocking on you. Let's go into the scriptures. Psalms 24, one. Amen. Go ahead. Psalms 24, Psalms mm -hmm. 24, 1. Mm -hmm. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Amen. What do you understand by that? Everything belongs to God. Every single thing belongs to God. We belong to God. So we don't have to worry. When we want something, we go to God in prayer. Amen. That's it. Amen. Um, if somebody can just get um Job 41 11 for me. Job 41 11. Hey, look for it. Okay. Okay. Who has given me anything that I need to pay back? Everything under heaven is mine. 
this goes with Sam. 24 line. When you're going through your changes, there are people they have financial stress and they cannot see their way. I want you to know he owns a thousand hills with caverns. You go before your wealthy father and you cry out to him until you see a breakthrough. You see, sometimes we may say we've been praying, but it's a kind of prayer we pray. Are we removing the darkness in our lives so Satan don't have a stronghold anymore? Sometimes we say we're praying and we have Satan still present in our life. We're not removing him. So he wouldn't, so God bless you, Satan have a block on you. You have to remove things as you pray and cleanse yourself. So God blessings would reach you. You have to be able, sometimes God have us waiting because of the, our standards and the way we are. We are not ready for the big blessing God have. Because the minute we get it, we forget God like, oh, bye. We do that to each other. Don't you think people would do that to God? As soon as God give them, they're like, oh, bye. They just forget everything God has just done for them. And they just shoot. Like Superman, they disappear. So God allow us to process us sometimes to bless us so we will be grateful and we will treat him as he deserves. Amen. We need to understand that. Matthew 6, 24. Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two master, for either he will hate the one and love the other. Or as he will hold on to the one and despite the other, he cannot serve God and mammon. Go ahead and explain what you read. Well, either you have to, you have to pick one, but you can't hold on to the two because you go here to one and love you next to the scripture. So it's so you have to pick one. Thank you, dear. And here you use the word mammon. They're talking about the God behind it no one can serve the masters that's why it cannot be not hot not cold lukewarm don't work in this spiritual kingdom is it either you're on fire or you're fire out is it either for god or you for the devil there's no in between in this battlefield that we're in you would always want to love one more than the other. You would always say, I cannot do this. And you will go to it before God. You would always say, I have to work when sometimes you don't have to at that point. But you choose because God didn't matter because God is there anyway and he's loyal and he's faithful. So I better do what I want to do. So we treat God like a doormat. Mammon makes us do that. Mammon make you have no desire for God at a certain point. So you devote yourself to one thing more than the other. And usually the fleshy things get preference over God because it feels normal, it feels natural, and it feels like the right thing to do. And Mammon is saying, yes, motivating you. You have to do what you gotta do. You gotta hustle and grind because nobody gonna do it for me. If that God didn't wake you up that day, you wouldn't be able to hustle, grind, or grind. You won't be able to do nothing. Thank God for sure. Jesus. Amen. You cannot serve God. And so, mama, pick a sight tonight. What do I desire? What is important to me? Who is my master? Is the question. Ask yourself, who is my master? People have all kind of masters and they think they're serving God. Some people master is even the anger. Believe me, some people master is the anger. Some people master is the anger. We have to be careful, people of God. Don't be a slave to the wrong thing. Pick your master. Let's go. Philippians 4.13. 4, 
I can do all things to Christ that strengthens me. Go ahead and explain to me what to read. I of myself cannot do nothing but relying on God and his word within my life, I can accomplish what he has for me in, in reality. So relying on God to do his will within my life, I know I can do all, all things to Christ that give me the victory. Amen. Amen. You know, I think we don't think far enough. If you get sick, and you cannot do it anymore. Who is going to take care of you if it wasn't for Jesus? The days that you're in a desperate position and you feel like no one is showing up for you and nobody can help you because they have their own things going on and somehow you made it. Who do you think showed up for you? The Christ in you would allow you and motivate you to desire him so much that his strength would be sufficient. His strength would push you to do what you need to do. You do not have to be greedy or serve another God to satisfy you. You can serve only God. He is big enough to do what you need according to his riches his riches there is nothing too hard for our daddy there is nothing too hard for your god stop making money make you depressed or happy too many people are either depressed or happy depending on the money in the bank account depending on what is in the wallet it makes them happy or sad. That means mammon is controlling you. You didn't know that, did you? Because anytime you see a bank account and it looks dwindling or your check looks small, it makes you very angry, you want to talk to nobody, you turn into demon 101. Mammon is the one driving that character in you. And you don't even know you're learning that tonight. Mammon has just pushed the button and tell you, if you don't have me, you don't have anything. Mama just fooled you and tell you without showing his ugly face that if you don't have me, you have nothing. So Mama is the one that tells you that your, your money don't look right. So you can't have any friend and you cannot be nice to nobody because they don't know what I going through. Mama has just destroyed the character. Somebody need to say, ouch. Ouch. Somebody needs to say, ouch. They know that is them. They know there are days that the money look right and they didn't treat the people around them good for no reason. Because mammon push the button that you desire me. And because you don't have me, you can't be nice to nobody because God is the blessing you and showing up. So you need me. That's what mammon just did to you. God help us. Next. First Samuel 7. Two seven, the Lord make it poor; He make it rich. He he buy he buy it low, and he, he lift it up. Amen. Two Samuel two seven. Mm -hmm. If you understand what what it is, can you explain to the people? Uh, he give it; he could take it away. So he give it, give it clear hold and might. He could take it. Did he could take it away? Amen. Thank you, Doug. Now. I want to tell you something about the scripture. The Lord knows and choose who he make rich and who he allow. He said the poor you would always have amongst. And this means spirit and financially. So when people, them, the prosperity teachers saying that, they said that being poor is a curse. That's what they tell you. God wants everybody to be rich. That's not biblical. God knows who is giving wealth and allowing Satan blesses too. Don't forget to teach you all about that. Satan blesses his people as well. And God chooses who you make rich. You may not agree with it. 
You may not want it, but God is the boss. And if you can make somebody else rich, he may not be may not make you rich, but guess what? It's best to pray for contentment. Right. Amen. You may not be rich, but you can pray for contentment. Contentment is even better than riches, in case you don't know that. That means you can roll over in your bed and sleep good no matter what's going on when you're contented. When you're rich doesn't guarantee that you can sleep well. Because with much wealth come much sorrow. Because there's more responsibility. I am giving you godly wisdom. Sure. Amen. So ask God for contentment. Say, Lord, I may not be have as much. Lord, but give me sufficient where I'm contented and happy. Where I can do the work of God, I can pay my bills and be sleep well because I know I am satisfied. Mama, make you unsatisfied. He brings some down and lifts others up. The Lord is the one that decides who get what and what get who. And I will explain something to you. When you're begging for wealth, I want to tell you something. That most people is when they are not wealthy, it drives them to want more of Jesus. When you don't have, it motivates you to want more of God. That's why the meek shall inherit the kingdom. The poor is Amen. because they have a more desire of God than uh, than than anything else. Than when you're rich, that's why so many wealthy wealthy people are evil. Because when they start to become wealthy, they start to make mammon and they God, and then they don't want the one true God because they think the money can bail them out. Because money does answer all things in this world, but not in the spirit. Satan, you can't go bring a million dollars to Satan and tell him I'm buying my way out of hell. You go with him, and money does nothing for him. Satan only wants blood and your soul. Powerful that's it message. that's it very powerful satan want blood on your soul so stop with this i am hustling and grinding mentality Maman would dry you up in god before you finish hustling and grind you realize you and god don't have relationship no more because you are sucked in with how much you need that money and god and you then you realize i don't read my bible i i, I just need to sleep all the time i just need to do this all the time and you just realize i don't pray as i used to pray because mama has distracted you to become the god that you're serving so god was put in a Burner silently while mammon was being served. Stop when I need to hustle and grind and just labor not to be rich. Go to work and get your money, pay your bills, and be happy in Jesus. I beg you. You don't have to have a mansion because your neighbor has a mansion. Mama will make you grieve and envy over somebody's mansion and God just wants to give you a full bedroom. Mama does that to the people of God. Ask God to help you, please. Ask God to help you, please. Mama is making you lose your relationship with God. The God of money, have you served him? You lost your relationship with God and you desire more of mammon than God. Please, people, I love you. Be careful. Hmm. Be careful. God help us. Galatians 5, 26. Got it? Who got it? Galatians 5, 26. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Oh, Lord. Go ahead. Well, the scripture I see in here is, let us be contented with what we have, 
and don't be desirous of being glory, which means, you know, like wanting too much and provoking one another, like envying one another. It is a waste of time envying other people because you don't know what it did to get what they have. So we have to be contented. Amen. Thank you. I always talk about that. You too. Okay. Whoever coming on, mute your phone, please. Let us not become conceited. Do you know what that means? Be absorbed. Absorbed in things. Vain glory. Absorb in what and how much you could have. Or provoke one another. You start to go after other people. You start to provoke other people's life because you want, you're desiring everything else that God didn't give to you, maybe not yet, but you want your time to be now because somebody else has accomplished something that you want for yourself. That's what mammon does. So Shemel, um, Shemel, beautiful. That's what mammon does. Mammon tell you, oh, Sister Chamel, just have a new house. And I want to compete with her. So you have to get a house by any means. And she have a three bedroom. So I want a five bedroom. Mama drives you to that. So you start to get, you're not only being lustful. Like, you see, the Bible we say that um, pride is what God gave Satan out of hell. But the first crime Satan desired to be where God was. Remember that. So he was conceited and lustful. And then the lust turned into pride. In case you never heard that message, I could teach it one day. His first thing was lusting after what God has. His first thing was becoming high and, high and seated with God. He lusted and was conceited. And then the pride entered and he got kicked out. So when you start to lust after, I want Shima Shimon have. Should I have a, a nice car? I want the car Shimon have, and I want this color, and I want the same color, but mine will be nicer. I want the Shimon 2016, I want the 2018. That's what Mammon does. So you're motivated now to go and lust after her things, become stressed over it, become greedy and hustle and grind because you want to be Shimel and you don't even know it. Mammon has blinded you. Mama even make people to want people, husband and wife, because the person look as a well taken care of, and they have money to want that person spouse. Mama caused that you become greedy and lustful so much that mama cost you your soul into adultery. So true. I know this message has some people like could not. Mm -hmm. You want what somebody else have. The person engaged to get married, but you want that boyfriend that they have, or they, they, they um, what they call when they engage? The fiance. Because mm -hmm. the person getting treated good. So mama mm -hmm. costs you to lust and greed after that person and what they have. Oh, Sister Shemel have a husband. And I find, I find you this and that. So I want to Sister Shemel. I, I would, if I see him one day, hi, how are you? Sister Shemel, friend and all. And you want to be his friend all of a sudden because you're lusting after what she has. Mammon has caused you to be that person. Amen. Greed. Desiring hmm. other people's things. This is, a, this message I give is up every time to so clean up, clean up, clean up time. Your mindset. All your right. mindset. Your mindset. It's going to cost you to go to heaven or hell if you don't get this mind right. Read Romans 2, go to 12. This mind is going to cost you a spot in hell that is permanent and there is no coming out. This mammon. So keep taking these messages and going about your life like nobody business and think it's a joke that I'm bringing them. God is giving me these messages to give you guys. 
May God help us. We almost Amen. finished. Proverbs 21, 2, then Philippians 4, 19, and we're done. Every way, mm -hmm. okay, man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondered the hearts. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Right? What the scripture here is saying that God will see how man does see, and everything that man that mankind do today, they always think that they're right. Right? Sure. And it, there's always a consequence behind our actions, especially when we're wrong. But you see, the Lord knows our hearts, and also, for perfect example, um, Saul, when he disobeyed God, he thought he was doing things right in his own eyes. You understand what I mean? And because of that spirit of my man, right, God allowed his kingdom to be handed over to David. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dave. Now, people, we, we know everything, first of all. We've been here 10,000 years. That's how it is. You know two scripture, you know everything. That's a problem. We need God to direct us when it comes to how we work and use our money. Christian people don't have no control. That's why there's so much poverty in the church. We mismanage our money and want to know why we're going through so much when sometimes it's our fault because we don't listen and ask God for direction after we go before him. We want to still do our own thing. Hmm. Boy, this is a big ouch. But the Lord examined their hearts. The Lord look at your motive. What, what is your desire if you get this? How would you use it? Would you honor me with your rich, your substance and the riches of the wealth that I give you? Would you do that? Would you do that? Honor God with your money. Would you do that? Would you guard your heart and be careful and not be a fool to money? I can be led to the sin of different ways, placing hope in money. Are you that person placing hope in money? Are you that person? Are you a good, are you good in discipleship when it comes to money? Can you be contented? Can you be contented? God help us. You see, Father Abraham said, no one made me rich. He didn't need what the king had. He knew he can depend on God. And what God gave him nations to this, this present day. Because he knew where his wealth came from. You need to know where your wealth come from. That is why it says people may be right in their own eyes, but the Lord examined their heart. You need God to direct you and stop thinking you know it all. Too many people know it all and they're ignorant and they want nobody to talk to them. They want no advice. And as soon as you advise them and it's not what they want to hear, they don't like you. They don't want to deal with you. You think you're this, you think you're that. That is how they start. And then when they fall, they come crying for prayers. Hmm. I'm speaking the reality. Y'all know me a long time. That is what we do. Amen. And then we have pity parties and we want people to join the party with us because we choose not to listen. You're asking for advice when you're mad when the advice wasn't what you want to hear. Hmm. And it was the right advice. And you will go to your pastor, another pastor. That's not my office. You still turn and go to your pastor. You're still mad at your pastor. You go to church for three Sundays because he advised you the same thing somebody is telling you. Hmm. This got to fix. Philippians 4.19. Philippians 4.19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Okay. This, this scripture remind me, is, remind me of um, Psalm 23. One, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And as you said, Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. So the Lord shall supply 
all your needs according to his riches and glory, which means, as you said tonight, the Lord know who he will, who's to get rich and, you know, so this is what it reminds me of. Some of us, if we had all the will that we desire, we have be spitting in God's face. We do not and we have something. I'll be quite mm -hmm. honest. I'm, I'm like, mm -hmm. there, there are people who cannot work. They are sick or for whatever reasons. And it's very hard when you're in that place. But in that case, God has placed some family. He has placed certain friends. He has placed the state and the being the government. And he has placed the church. But are they doing what they're supposed to do? There is help. God put things in place for a reason. So you don't have to run after mammon. You don't have to be a criminal. You don't have to lie, steal, sleep all over the place and throw your body like you lie down with dogs to get up with fleas. You don't have to lust at what everybody else have. You don't know what blood they're drinking or what altar they're sacrificing to get it. Many people have altars that you don't know. Many people you admiring and saying they're doing well and they came from far. I'm not saying everybody. I'm not judging. But I'm saying there are many people that you are looking at. They cannot sleep in the night because they have demonic altars feeding for what they have. And you are going glorifying them and applauding them. And they have to go to the ocean, put their sacrifice, and then walk backwards. And they cannot turn back before that spirit kill them. That is why they cannot turn. That's why when they go to the ocean, they can't turn back. The demon, they went to appease and give the sacrifice that they tell them to go give. That demon turn around and kill them if they should see their face. Mermaids give wealth. That's why some people sleep with them. When they have mermaid wives, the moment wives, they have to sleep with them and they give them wealth. A lot of leaders and pastors do that. They have a moment wife in the water. If I go to give all these some things here tonight, if I really go to tell all these some things here tonight, I don't want to leave this line. These things are real. And I'm trying to warn you, when you go and play with sharks, you're going to get eaten. Do not play with mammon. Stop making mammon make you walk and bleed like a slave and you leave God on the side when you wake up one day and realize I forgot God for a whole week hmm. because mammon had you on your ears. I'm telling you all. God help us. Father, I thank you for this message. Father, I deliver it as you ask me the best I can. Father, I pray, oh God, that your people would receive this message and it becomes the flesh in the light. That you transform their minds, God. That, Father, they're not too busy to receive from you because your word is life. Father, bless them. Bless their hands. And let them remember you, Father, when you give to them, that you are the one that brings true increase. I thank you and I bless you for this message. And I bless everyone in this line. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Everybody Amen. say? Amen. 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 Now, I hope we learn something tonight i hope we learn something tonight i hope this message resonates in the spirit of the people i want you to know that these messages are there to help you grow it's there to help you become a better person in christ mm. they are there